Hello everyone. Welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is the third video for chapter one. In this video, we will take a couple more examples on the topic of directional field. These examples are slightly more complicated than the first simple one we had. Okay, so in this example, the equation is the following. We have y prime equals y minus 1 times y minus 5. So I would like to call your attention again on the right hand side. The function depends only on y but not on t. Also, since we have the term y minus 1 times y minus 1, this is a nonlinear function of y. Therefore, this is a nonlinear equation. Now let's follow a similar algorithm as the previous example. That is, we analyze different regions where the y derivative carries a certain sign. So first, we begin with identifying the region where y prime shall be zero. And we see that because of the product form, then if y equals 1 or y equals 5, y prime will be 0. And that means the directional field will have horizontal tangent. Thanks to the polynomial um, factorized form of the right hand side, we know that um, y equals 1 and y equals 5 cut the y-axis into three pieces and on each of these um, interval um, the product will carry a fixed sign. So let's start for small value. Say if y is less than 1, this term is negative and this term is negative and the product is positive. So that's the product is y prime. Now, if y shall lie between 1 and 5, bigger than 1, this term is positive, less than 5, this term is negative, and then we have y prime is negative. And now, finally, if y is bigger than 5, and then this is positive and this is positive, and y prime will be positive. Okay, so here is a um, directional field um, plot and we have seen from the previous example that doing it by hand um, does not not generate a nice plot and therefore um, this one is generated in MATLAB which is a very useful software for numerical computation and the command there is uh, dfield8. Okay. If you are curious, then you can go and explore. It can do a lot of things for you, the MATLAB. Okay, so we see from our discussion, we notice that um, y equals 1, all the arrows shall be horizontal. y equals 5, along that line, the same. And we see that for y less than 1, y prime is positive and we have all these directional arrows pointing upward. And for y between 1 and 5, y prime is negative, and therefore they all have negative downward slope. And then, the finally, y bigger than 5, and we, y prime is positive, and then we have upward pointing um, directions. So, um, the equation the right hand side is written in a factorized form of polynomial y minus 1 times one my y minus 5 and we see that if we cross the value y equals 1 we change sign from positive to negative okay because that's a single root and the same thing happens when we cross 5 it changes sign from negative to positive. Okay, so based on the information given by this plot, what can we say 
about the solutions qualitatively. Okay, so let's do some discussion on that. And uh, here on the left up corner, I include the directional field plot so we can have a easier discussion. So first, we observe that if y0 equals 1, I shall be here. And then, since the arrow pointing to a horizontal direction, I'll just keep going along this horizontal line. So y equals 1 the constant is a solution. And then by the same argument, if the initial value shall be at 5, and then I will stay on the horizontal line, and the constant is a solution. And the third case is uh, the initial condition shall be less than 1, you're somewhere down here. And here you see that y prime is bigger than 0, so your value will increase. And then as you increase, your slope gets flatter and flatter because it becomes horizontal in the limit as you approach 1. Okay, So we are familiar with such a situation. We know that asymptotically, as time goes to plus infinity, all the values will approach y equal 1. Now the fourth case, y initial value is between 1 and 5. So between this horizontal solution and this one, and we see that um, since the gradient is negative, and we follow the arrow, the solution will decrease, and then the slope will get smaller and smaller, and asymptotically it will approach 1. So that's what we wrote here. And finally, if um, initial value is bigger than 5, and then we see here all the arrow points upward. Your solution will go upward, and uh, the slope will increase, and it will just go to plus infinity. Let's um, make a remark from these two examples we had. We see that if I have a differential equation y prime of t equals f of y, where t does not occur. Then, and if there is a y0, where we have f of y0 equals 0, for example, the value 1 here and the value 5 here. And then we observe that y t equal to that value constant is a solution. In fact, this type of equation, they are very interesting. Later, there will be a separate chapter where we will talk about them. Here is a example, um, um, kind of a different type of question we'll ask, like a reverse question. So in this example, um, you are given the plot of the directional field, which is here. And then the question asks you that it provides you four differential equations and asks you which one of them could have generated this um, directional field. Okay, so now let's use what we have learned and uh, systematically analyze the situation. So let's look at the directional field. We observe two constant solutions, y equals 1 and y equals 3. So for y equal 1 and y equals 3, your equation y prime must be 0. And let's see, for a, that's not true. And for b, c, d, it's true. So we rule out a. And then we can um, simply check the sign of y prime on the three intervals, y less than 1 down here, y between 1 and 3 in the middle here, and y bigger than 3, to see which of these three equations would match. For example, um, when y is less than 1 is negative. Then let's look at d. This term is positive, y less than 1, this term is negative, 
times a negative, it gives you a positive sign. So D is no good. And then let's consider the um, interval between 1 and 3. It has to be positive derivative. And let's look at B. And this term is positive. If y is between 1 and 3, this term is negative, And the whole thing will be negative. And therefore, B is no good. Then we are left with C. And we can ve easily verify that for C, it will have negative sign for y less than 1, and positive sign between 1 and 3, and positive sign for y bigger than 3. And therefore, only C could have generated this um, direction of field. And of course, there are um, alternative ways of finding the answer. For example, here's another way. And let's look at the graph, and we see that as the y value crosses 1, the y prime changes sign. And uh, as it crosses 3, it does not change sign. So this indicates that the y minus 1 term on the right hand side must have an odd power on it, and the y minus 3 must have an even power to it. And then we see that b cannot be. Okay? But uh, both c and d, they, they are good. This is power 1, this is power 2, and it only differ by a sign. So to pick between C and D, and then you can just pick, say, Y less than 1, it has to be negative, this is correct, and this is wrong. So you pick C also. Okay, so, and that's it for this example, and uh, I hope uh, it helps you understand the concepts a bit better. And in the next video, we'll go through one more example, more complicated, where actually the right-hand side will have a dependence on the T. Finally, please allow me to end this video on a lighter note. I'm looking at all these parallel lines, and I can't help thinking. These parallel lines, they have so much in common. It's such a pity that they'll never meet. Okay, hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.